Hey, it's Karen, and I'm coming at you, giving you a run-through of my code and my coding process in order to create this basic algorithm right here. Now, before I get into it, uh, let me just explain what this does. It takes a desired target string that you want. It generates a random assortment of strings uh, and then breeds and mutates them through multiple generations until it gets your desired string that you have in the beginning. Now if we give this a run we can see output here update if we just click and go back and we are right now looking for subs and we can see through the generations keeps going until eventually in generation number 320 here it successfully created subs nice so the main two classes i used in this uh, the population and the species if you go look at my other video on genetic algorithms you know that there are five components in order to uh, successfully create a genetic algorithm. So let's just start off uh, in, in the population though. The population holds an array of species over here and this is just the total thing while each species holds its own chromosome and it holds the real data so it has the fitness value assigned to it it has the dna which is the binary data the stored word and the word which is the current string of the word now when we generate the population which is the first component of genetic algorithms we just come here and we can see we have a method called generate population. Now that just creates a new population to any size you want under pop size. And it does it to uh, the species constructor with just a string. So when there is a string involved, it uh, sets the target to S, which is the target string we're going for, and it generates the rest of it with the DNA, the word, and the fitness. So if we go down to here, with generate DNA, we can see that it will, here, it randomly gets a value inside the index of our table here that we have as binary value so you might be wondering what this table is if we go up we see the table is top here and it just holds space and all the layers of the basic alphabet now this is just a uh, simplified so we have an integer between one and the table length and then we convert it to binary and fill the rest of the space with zero up to five in length this is just to account for all the possible ones and we know it's always going to have each uh number is going to have five zeros and ones uh to represent it it's easy for decoding and then we put the string all together with all the separate binary values that we derive from the table to the length of the desired target string. Now this is how we randomly generate our uh, population. Now you can see we store the DNA and we update, which is just updating the fitness and decoding it. So I'll get into that more later. So we randomly generate the population. We want to assign the fitness which is the update so if we continue looking at the species we can see our update method which just decodes and assigns our fitness so the code here it will uh java has this neat method called far phrase int 
var's int, and if you give it a a string value and uh, a string value of binary value, and you give it uh, two, it will know that you're counting in base twos, and uh, you can get the binary value back into a normal int and that's what I used and then next I just compared the uh, int to make sure that it was along with the table value I checked this here just in case it, when it's reading later that is uh, good and then I just pull the letter from the table value, uh, referencing that that we showed before, and adding it to the word, and then eventually outputting the word. And then with that word, we assign the fitness. Now for this, we go character by character in each word, depending on which one's shorter, because there's a possibility that one will be shorter. And we find the fitness of each letter based on its uh, closeness to the other letter alphabetically. So we can do this because chars are also integers, if you know. They have integer values, and the ASCII table has those integer values in uh, alphabetical order. So the ones closer together have less difference while the ones further apart have a bigger difference. So if we simply inverse it by having it one divided by the absolute value of the difference of the two characters, we will get um, a fitness value that is higher when they're close together and lower when they are further apart. And we just do that for the character, adding it together and finding the sum to give us our fitness value. That's very simple. And then our next step after we assign the fitness is to analyze it. Now, I have multiple things for this. If we look at the runner code, we can see it here in action. So this is just getting ready our output. And then we generate our population here using an example dot generate. And then uh, in the generate population method, it also assign the fitness automatically. And then the example finds the total fitness. This is part of the analyzing fitness for this code. So for this, it simply um, finds the total fitness. So it uses uh, the get fitness method and it finds the sum of all the fitness in the population. And it returns that and stores that. Then um, we also have the species high fitness where it just goes through the whole table and finds the fitness which is highest. Then, if we we check, which is our analyzing pop, which is our condition, while the fitness, um, we know that based on our assigned fitness value, that uh, when the difference is zero, we will have, or when the difference is, um, when the letters are the same, we will have one here, and it will be our value of one for our fitness. So for each character, so then we know that if we have the right word, it will be the same value of the length of the word. If not, then we uh, have to breed and mutate all the while we are outputting our useful data here to the output text. So we have our read and mutate, which is under gen plus here. Now, we have our gen plus, which first increases the generation by one. Then it creates a new pop, which will store all our new population. So we first create new species and copy them based on the roulette selection that we discussed before. If you want to have more in depth, I go into that in my presentation. Uh, 
Uh, oh yeah, roulette selection is in the population because it needs the whole population. So it just basically generates a random number between one and the total fitness, or zero and the total fitness, and then it generates, and then with that number it goes through the population and each fitness, finding the index of where that would land if you're spinning it like a roulette table. Now, uh, it randomly selects those, then it breeds them together. Now, this uses one point crossover breed. So, it creates two new strings. Uh, it randomly generates an int. Uh, this is just, of course, uh, using a random chance that it will also not breed, which is currently a 70% chance of, um, breeding or right, yeah so it's pretty high odds there and then once it if it does breed it'll randomly generate that uh, int and that is between the, the uh, zero and the total length of the string of the DNA and then it will do the out uh, on that point it will switch both uh, it'll switch the parents cross over the points at which the parents are at and finally save that under the uh, inputted it'll change directly the inputted classes values and it will update them since uh, they are new binary codes. They need to be decoded and assigned fitness. And then after that happens, we mutate them. So this is just where you go bit by bit, seeing if they're going to mutate. And this is fairly simple. So we just go do a for loop for the whole thing. Then if it's R is less than or equal to M chance, which is 0 0.001, uh, and that's our randomly generated number then it will just check what it is and switch it to this check what character it is and switch it to the other one and then of course we give that back to the DNA and we update that and uh, that is our breeding and mutating in this uh, and then after it does all that and it creates enough for the whole population running through this for loop, it will copy the population over to the new, it'll uh, copy the new population over to the old population overriding that. And then from that, it will, uh, in the mutate, it updates and signs of fitness. So then it'll analyze the population again and check the conditional statement, then continue breeding mutating until it checks the checks this conditional statement all while outputting each generation. Now for the output, uh, it might be confusing right now, but it's very simple to understand. First line is a generation. Then next you have the total fitness of everything. Then you have the highest fitness and it gives you the um, the fitness of that word, uh, what the word is, and what the binary string of it. Then it gives you a random subject to see your diversity, and it gives you the fitness, the word, and the binary code for that. And then it moves on to the next generation, giving you the total fitness. You can see it increased here, uh, giving you the high fitness. You can see it stayed the same and another random subject then it gives you increase as it should be increase in fitness and eventually through all this time uh, with uh, this one had an issue with the random population in the beginning not having the proper you can see that's just missing the U here and it's just waiting for a random mutation to give it the U in order to uh, fully complete that, but uh, eventually it will. As you can see in 
Uh, if we go to the bomb generation, 320 here. So 